Remember everyone, autism is on the inside. Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Sam and I make content about autism, ADHD stuff here on the internet, here on YouTube. So if you think you might like that kind of thing, feel free to check out my other videos or subscribe. So before we begin, I think it's important to state that saying you don't look autistic to an autistic person is kind of considered a microaggression by many, many people in the autistic community. It's not really the compliment you think it is. So if you say this to someone and get a bristly response, don't blame me. I'm allowed to put it in the title because I'm autistic, but also because I am a provocative internet creator looking to trade outrage for clicks. I wanted to explore the idea of looking autistic because it comes up time and time again, both in real life and kind of on the internet, a lot of people making content about this, being quite rightly a little bit annoyed about that phrase. So first of all, autistic people are so different from one another. You don't need to use functioning labels to understand that some of us can live what other people consider relatively normal lives, and some autistic people require full-time care, often as the result of autism plus additional disabilities, conditions, or learning difficulties. But where do people get this idea of what autism looks like, or that autism has a specific look? Now, I believe this is largely the media, and media portrayals have historically been quite inaccurate or very stereotypical. And this is something that is improving due to a push for more autistic casting. I think after Sia released that movie that everybody got quite angry about, I think that everybody's starting to see that autistic people want autistic people playing autistic people on screen. How many times do I say autistic people there? But you can't discount the legacy of movies like Rain Man, for example, this absolutely massive movie, Oscar-winning movie, that's really stuck with people of the generation who saw it back then. Even though the movie called this character autistic and the character was not supposed to be autistic, he was supposed to have savant syndrome and FG syndrome. So there are good and bad representations out there, but it's kind of hit and miss. And I don't know about you, I've been in the process of enjoying a random TV series and all of a sudden there is an autistic character in an episode and everybody gets really weird about it. But media isn't the only place where we get an idea of what autism looks like, of course. Many people know autistic people in real life, and very often it's a child because children typically are more frequently diagnosed than adults. There is more of a system in place to diagnose children than adults. And the first thing people want to do if they know an autistic child is compare you to them. And I shouldn't have to say this, but autistic children do not look or act like autistic adults. There seems to be this belief that because you don't grow out of autism when you turn 18, that you can never learn or change, and so you're doomed to be a child mentally forever. And this is obviously extremely infantilizing. So it seems pretty obvious to me that you shouldn't say, you don't look autistic because you don't look anything like my eight-year-old nephew. However, I'm sure this is where the knives are gonna come out in the comments. Uh, I do want to make a point that actually, no, I don't look autistic most of the time. Yes. Let me explain, <laughs> let me explain. There are certain features of autism that really do make you look autistic, such as, I'm gonna call it large stimming, I don't know, uh, is that a word, I made it up. Stimming that involves large bodily movements. You can't see if I'm fiddling with something in my pocket right now, I mean, you can, but I'm not. <laughs> but I might be, um, and you wouldn't be able to see it. Uh, but you certainly can see when someone is rocking or bashing their head against a chair. But both of these things are stims, both of these things are autistic traits. One is invisible. There's also vocal stimming or vocal tics. Uh, that's also a way that a lot of autistic people stim. Often this can be loud and maybe distressing to some people around them if it's done in public. And likewise, there are some autistic people who will also vocally stim, but will do it like singing what they're thinking or just in a much more quiet and less obvious way. Same thing, both of those are stimming, one of them is more obvious. There are also a lot of sensory seeking behaviors that can be disruptive in public and make somebody look more autistic. If you are stimming loudly and obviously in public, maybe you're wearing large noise canceling headphones, there's a very large chance that quite a few people will be like, that it's an autistic person. Whereas the person sort of sitting quietly and stimming and wearing earplugs that you can't see, they're gonna blend in much more. And I can't talk about this topic without talking about masking, right? Masking is a form of camouflage for us autistic people, and it can be conscious or unconscious. Not every autistic person can mask or wants to mask for that matter. 
And I would actually say that the ability to mask is one of the dividing factors within the autistic community. If you are able to mask and pass as, as neurotypical, that opens up a lot of avenues for you. That's not to say that it doesn't come with its uh, cons as well as the pros, but for the autistic people who can't mask, I can understand that thinking it must be amazing to be able to do that. Appearing not autistic does of course have its benefits in a society where many consider autism to be a tragedy. There are various ways that you can mask in order to blend in, including conforming to conventional beauty or grooming standards, conforming to gender expectations, learning scripts to be able to maintain small talk, actively hiding your stims, or doing as I did as a teenager, obsessively watching television in order to understand human interaction, and then going on to do a degree in psychology in order to understand human interaction. There's surface level masking and there's deep committed masking, and it all requires significant energy. It's actually recognized by diagnosticians, for the most part, when making an autism assessment. And for someone to then turn around and go, well, you don't look autistic, is just like, rage. It's really invalidating if you share your diagnosis to get that response. Because it basically sounds like, well, I don't really believe you. This is why it's a microaggression. So masking is a really big one, a really big reason why people don't look autistic. And for the autistic people who mask, often people around them have no idea that they're autistic unless they disclose it. But the important thing is, they still are. Another really important point that I want to make is stress. The impact of stress on autistic people is massive because we're already dealing with stress every day. But when things pile on, when life gets really stressful, in my experience, this can cause your autistic traits that were probably always there to kind of intensify or, or maybe suddenly appear. And there are many different ways in which life can be stressful or traumatic. Living in poverty or unstable housing, being bullied in the workplace, being abused by those close to you, being incarcerated. And we know that autistic people are more likely to fall into one or many of those categories. The thing is, as an adult, you don't suddenly wake up and think about getting an autism diagnosis because life is good and everything's going great. It usually happens after a period of intense stress or burnout. And the reason is, the more stressed the autistic person is, the more their traits pop and the more energy it takes to hide them and the less energy they have and it kind of goes around in a terrible circle. And so as a consequence, a lot of what we think are autistic traits that will always be there and they're just a part of autism are actually expressions of autistic distress. And honestly, we have no real picture of what a happy, fulfilled autistic person looks like. Because guess what? People don't want to fund studies on happy autistic people. The last thing I want to talk about is ADHD, which has a significant crossover with the autistic population. Stereotypes of autism are that we don't really like to socialize or that we need everything to be in a really strict routine. And then the autistic slash ADHD or ADHD, ADHD, it sounds funny, I can't say it right. ADHD person, they come along and won't shut up and want to be your friend and is always, you know, looking for something new and exciting and fun. And you're like, this doesn't really look like autism, does it? And I do get that because no, it doesn't. And it also doesn't really look like ADHD. <sighs> Ironically, I don't actually get told I don't look autistic that much, probably because I don't go outside and see people that much. But I did get told once that I didn't look ADHD, which is a new one for me. I've never heard that before, but I was told that I didn't look ADHD because I wasn't like pacing the room and fidgeting. The irony was I actually had a fidget toy in my pocket at that moment, but it didn't occur to me until later to like pull it out and go, ah, ha ha. <laughs> so let me know in the comments if you get this a lot. If people are still actually saying this, I suspect yes. It's really frustrating and it kind of feels so rude and hostile when someone says it to you. So if you are a person who has said that in the past, like don't dwell on it, don't worry about it, but just maybe reconsider saying that kind of thing going forward. But on the other hand, there are some valid points around the idea of looking or not looking autistic. It's just that the person saying you don't look autistic isn't the one actually making them. Remember everyone, autism is on the inside. You be whoever you want to be on the outside. Take care and I'll see you next time. Bye. You don't even need to use functioning. 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 It's absolutely massive, Oscar winging, winging. So if you are stimming very obviously and wearing rather loud, loud, what? Masking is a form of camouflage for us autistic people. That's a very loud airplane.